Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. All right, what's going on guys? This is Rob and we are picking up with the conclusion or really ending with the conclusion of Silver Surfer Black, which is a story you guys really, really seem to enjoy. <laughs> I'll be honest, I had no idea you guys were gonna like this story so much when I first started it. I was like, we're just gonna do this just because of everything going on with Noel, might as well throw it in there, right? So we understand what's going on with the Silver Surfer, but I'm glad you guys dig it. I'm glad you guys really enjoy it. Uh, so having said that, so in the last video, we basically picked up with the idea that Silver Surfer basically ran into Ego the Living Planet, who was kind of this distant bodied voice that was guiding the Silver Surfer away from Noel under the idea that Surfer simply just didn't have the power to defeat Noel, right? And that's still true, right? He just doesn't have that ability to pull it off. The crazy thing about it, though, is that Ego existing at this point in time still shows us that Noel has not necessarily conquered the entirety of the universe, right? And we know that even for the most part, his crusade didn't necessarily succeed in that way, that he was ultimately stopped by the Celestials and then banished to a different dimension, right? All that was covered uh, when we first started covering, like, Noel, the symbiote god, his origin, all that kind of good stuff. The important thing here is is that with Silver Surfer conversing with, with Ego, what we end up finding out here is that Ego has a kind of infection inside of him, right? There's kind of a, there's this thing that seemed to crash into him and has more or less been causing him immense agony ever since it first arrived. And so Surfer ends up traveling inside the body of Ego, which Ego doesn't initially tell him is a good idea, right? It's kind of like, you probably shouldn't do this, man, because I am a living planet. Like I do have an immune system. <laughs> and in your weakened state, that immune system may very well kill you, right? But the response of the server is, it doesn't matter, right? In this instance, like I need your help in this uh and if this is causing you immense pain i will cure it i will get rid of it and then you and i will work together right so entering down inside the body of ego what he ends up finding here is galactus he ends up finding galactus and that's kind of a crazy thing right because this is new stuff this is stuff that that's really kind of being made up on the spot with regards to galactus that whenever it is that you look at marvel comics when it comes to the origin of galactus that he was originally gallon in the universe that came before the, the the current universe as it exists and that you ended up seeing uh him just kind of being born into this almost energy-like state, he basically created a cocoon around himself, and that in turn, he emerged from it, and then the first planet he consumed was Archaeopia. This is more or less new information being thrown in, but at the same time, it's kind of not, right? And that's what makes things a little wonky. That traditional origin of Galactus comes from what we call the sixth universe, right? And he was born into the seventh universe, which is this the, the version of the universe that we saw that led up to Secret Wars in 2015, right? This is could be looked at as a new universe, but it's one of these things where Marvel kind of confirmed it possibly is, but it's possibly not, because it's got a new name, but it's the, still the same numerical designation. So by all standards of measurement, this is the, the same universe that we've always been in, right? So it's basically Marvel changing the origin of, uh, or at least the, a, a portion of the origin of Galactus in the sense that when he first emerged inside this universe that he crashed into Ego, the living planet. And it's kind of nuts to know that like Null and Ego and, and Galactus were all sort of occupying the same sector of the universe around the same time. But ultimately, Silver Surfer travels directly inside this, you know, kind of protective sphere of Galactus. Galactus with the intention of essentially killing him, right? Like once he once he emerges, like once he leaves, he kind of puts this great big huge chain around it. Then once he leaves, he intends to pull it and to get rid of it because the because Ego asks him, like, what are you gonna do with this? He's like, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna take him into a star and drop him off, right? A white dwarf star and like drop him off in there, and his energy is just gonna disperse. But as he gets there with the intention of killing Galactus, Uwatu the Watcher pops up. And Uwatu the Watcher basically stops him and says, You can't do this. And it's one of these things where he kind of points to this idea: you're from Bill billions of years in the future. You're back here in the past, but understand it's not going to change you. It's not as though killing Galactus is going to undo everything that's happened and you're going to go, you know, the whole universe is going to reset itself and you're going to go back to being on Zen Law and Galactus will have never come there and you'll never have become the Silver Surfer and you'll be able to live your life with Shalabal. Understand every action has a consequence and there's no knowing what the consequence of this action is going to be. You know, and he kind of runs off these, these different alternate realities, right? He's like, there's one universe where you die alone on Zen Law. There's another universe universe where you grow old with your wife and children. There's one universe, which we saw from the Thanos win storyline, where basically he ends up dying against Thanos in the far-flung future while he's wielding Mjolnir, right? Any one of these is possible, and if he kills Galactus in his infancy, any one of them can come to fruition. So there's not a guarantee here, right? And that's the thing that Iwatu says, you're not guaranteeing a better future here. You could make things infinitely worse. We saw that with the death of Galactus in the old uh, the old stories of the Fantastic Four, with the rise of Abraxas, right? The Galactus basically died, and it unleashed Abraxas 
across the multiverse and he killed every version of Galactus across the multiverse that he could possibly find, right? He just literally almost wiped out everything, right? So Abraxas was wildly powerful. That's just one of the many possibilities that exist out there. And so ultimately, Uatu is like, if you're still hell bent on this idea of killing Galactus, then at least go talk to a person who's survived the death of a universe only to be born in the next one and has, in effect, made the same choice you have. And so Silver Surfer enters into this cube of Galactus, into this kind of stasis body, more or less, and then comes across Galen, right? Encounters Galen and has a conversation with him. And when Galen asks, like, who are you and why are you here? The response of the surfer is, I mean to kill you. And and when, when Galactus asks why, he says, it's because of all the, un the, the, the horrors that you're going to commit later on as you progress. You're going to emerge from this cube, basically, this kind of stasis cell where you're gathering your energies. And then you're officially going to enter the universe as Galactus, and you're just going to consume worlds. And you're going to kill countless beings, right? Trillions and trillions and trillions of beings for billions of years across the cosmos because you have to feed, because you kind of maintain this sort of balance in the universe, or at least you claim you do, right? Silver Surfer almost kind of almost kind of calls him into question. And so when, when Silver Surfer says, my job here, what I want to do is basically eliminate you so that all these horrors can basically come to an end, then the response of Galactus is, then aren't you the same as me in that case, right? If my existence here in this universe serves the purpose of maintaining a kind of balance between the light and the dark, that I consume worlds to sustain my essence in order to ensure that like whatever forces may come across this universe, that I as a cosmic being am constantly alive, right? That's kind of the role that I that I play. And you intend to kill me based on some kind of cosmic balance that you've created for yourself, then what's the difference between the two of us? And and really like Silver Surfer doesn't really have an answer for that. And so the response of Galen is do as you feel you should, right? But if there's one thing that I've learned over the course of my existence is this, you cannot defeat the dark with darkness. It doesn't work that way, right? You cannot become as bad as the people you're fighting in order to win. You have to kind of maintain a higher ground. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, I don't really agree with that philosophy, uh, but there is truth to the statement of Uatu the Watcher. If Silver Surfer were to kill Galen in his current form, which he's capable of doing, then in turn, he could lead to a worse future. The universe could be far worse off without Galactus than it is with Galactus. And so because of that being the case, that basically leads to the Surfer saying, okay, fine, then we're not going to do that, right? We're not going to play that game. He ends up basically taking the, the cube of Galactus and just flying it across the cosmos where it'll eventually arrive at the planet of Archaeopia, where Galactus will emerge for the first time and then basically consume that world the way he's supposed to, right? Kind of ensuring the timeline continues the way that it's supposed to continue on. From there, he ends up traveling directly back to Ego and he asks Ego for a favor. He's like, I need I need you to give me a portion of your power, right? Give me a portion of your ability because I'm going to need it for the thing that's coming. And he takes this soul bit of power, immerses it within himself, and then in turn travels to find Null, or at least Null finds him, right? Null ends up locating him directly on, uh, you know, directly where Ego is at. And so the two of them kind of set a trap to a degree. Now, one thing to understand is that because of the fact that he's been ripped through this black hole, because he's been put in the, you know, thrown into the past here, along with his encounter with Null, the Silver Surfer is in effect dying, right? His body's basically falling apart on the atomic level. It's a slow process, but a process that's happening nonetheless. And so the last great deed the Silver Surfer wants to commit here is basically ending or at least trying to end the crusade of Null, the symbiote god. And so where Null comes flying in at Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer takes this portion of this energy and plants it in himself and then basically starts going and fighting towards, uh, fighting fighting with Null, right? Now, in this moment when Null is flying towards Surfer, the move is put in by Ego to basically blast Null with this huge amount of energy, or all this magma as hard as he can, which Null basically dodges out of the way, right? So that, that attack doesn't necessarily work. From there, it's almost this kind of cat and mouse game between the Silver Surfer and Null, where Null's chasing the Surfer the surfer's bobbing and weaving and then taking these little pot shots at Null. It's, it's one of these things where it's obvious the Silver Surfer cannot necessarily beat him. But as he keeps going through and encountering Null, and as he keeps using his power cosmic, which is being reduced over and over again because of these encounters, the, the all black of Null keeps consuming him more and more. The Silver Surfer, his body keeps falling apart more and more and more and more. And that's why you see his body basically shifting from being silver to becoming more of like a black, almost intangible color. All the while maintaining this energy inside his body and so ultimately he ends up summoning his board and then crafting an enormous sword and he and Null finally battle one another in kind of a ritualistic combat type thing but Null gets the upper hand because again Silver Surfer is just not on the same power as Null and so as the two of them continue fighting finally Null ends up pinning him down right ends up pinning him down and then basically trying to force a symbiote directly onto him and ultimately he keeps saying like your power belongs to me right like all this this light that you have all this ability you have it's going to be mine you are going to 
be my knight because it's one of the things that we established in the last video. The Silver Surfer is immensely powerful, and if he can become a source of power for Null, then there's almost no telling what the two of them can pull off together. More than enough to kill Galactus, and certainly more than enough to conquer the universe. But the Silver Surfer has one last ace up his sleeve. Using what little power Cosmic he has remaining, he in turn says, fine, then if what you want is all this energy, all this life that I have, then take it. And he uses it to spawn a miniature sun and basically grows it in the face of Null. And as we know, light, energy, things like that are kind of like a weakness for Null. It's one of the reasons why he likes having this universe or this section of the universe filled with darkness because he wants to kind of fill the entire universe with darkness. There's no light, no, none of that stuff. And so using this basically sends Null flying across the cosmos, right? It also changes his appearance and makes him look the way that he does right now in the current day, but it sends him flying across the cosmos. The problem with this for the Silver Surfer is that it's not enough to kill Null, right? It's just enough to kind of push him at bay. But what he ends up doing is basically using his power along with the power that he received from, from, uh, from Ego to craft these kind of life seeds, right? These small little galactic seeds as they're called. And then he plants some of them or really plants most of them on this, this small little world, which he names Zen La. And then from there, takes off, right? Like basically his energy just kind of dissipates, his his physical form completely eradicates, and he kind of just dissipates and becomes one with all this, you know, the, the universe itself in effect. And so what he ends up doing is by virtue of this one, Zen Law comes into existence. So he basically creates the world he hails from, right? So kind of a self-fulfilling circular prophecy, but his actions also lead to the recreation of the worlds, or at least the formations of the worlds that Galactus had previously consumed somewhere along the line, right? So while he is in effect creating the worlds that Galactus would later consume, in in essence, he sees himself as committing a good deed, right? That while he's not really saving the lives of the people who were destroyed by Galactus, at the very least, he's giving birth to them, right? So it's almost kind of like, in some way, he's bringing them back to life where they had previously died, right? I don't know if that really makes any sense. It's really more of just kind of a personal, philosophical, and, and almost moral answer for the struggle the Silver Surfer's been going through over the course of all of his existence. But in essence, his physical form as we know it no longer exists. His mental essence, right? The, the energy that makes him who he is has dispersed across the, across Across the galaxy and the universe and kind of given birth to everything. And so following that, what he ends up doing is he basically re-emerges uh, from the black hole, but as a intangible all-black being. Now this happens at the same time that Stormbreaker basically emerges from the black hole, which is how like Beta Ray Bill and all those guys survive. It's why you didn't see Silver Surfer emerge with all of them when he was sucked into the black hole alongside everybody else, because this is the story he was experiencing. But at this moment right now in Marvel Comics, and even now going into like the King in Black with the appearance of the Silver Surfer, this is why he looks the way he does. He's completely covered in black along with a surfboard and he's intangible. He doesn't actually have a physical form. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corp. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.